right, so we're back with uh, another episode of Living Electric. Uh, sorry for missing last week, but I'm um, I'm here again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just me and Brandon this time, no guests, uh, but I just recently took a trip. Uh, I was, I'm was i going to say in my video on the trip, but it's my longest road trip ever in my car, and it's also likely the coldest road trip ever in my car. So <laughs> figured I would talk through that trip today and just kind of like tell Brandon about the trip because I don't think we've chatted since I got back. Nope. So nope. And you know, I'm kind of a sucker for EV road trips, the details, everything. So <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully I can get the video out before this podcast goes live. Cause I think we're kind of recording ahead of time, which is like, I feel like a first for living electric is getting ahead of <laughs> getting ahead of recording podcasts before they go live. Um, but, uh, so hopefully the video of this trip is out beforehand. So you can either watch that before or after this episode, hopefully, uh, if you, if you're interested and see kind of on the ground, what it was like, but, um, Started out in Columbus, Ohio, where I live, uh, and then drove up through the entire mitten of Michigan up to uh, Salt St. Marie. Hey, y'all, this is Editor Alex. I am editing this podcast right now, and I have since realized that it is actually pronounced Sue St. Marie, so I'm going to mispronounce it throughout the entire podcast. Apologies in advance. Which, if you don't know, is right on the border of Canada. I was literally like miles from Canada. Um, there's like Salt St. Marie, Michigan, and there's Salt St. Marie, Ontario. So they're like, they're, it's the same city, just like across the, across the bay. Um, so stopped there for the night. And then the next day drove over to Escanaba and, uh, had to do some work over there and then drove back essentially kind of retraced my steps and then stayed the night in Mackinac city before heading all the way back to Columbus. So, wow. <laughs> crazy long road trip. Um I think total, uh, I'll pull up like my stats from the trip, but it was insane how far it was. It was over 1300 miles. Um I used 455 kilowatt hours of energy. <laughs> <laughs> And my average efficiency for the trip was 343 watt hours per mile. So that's kind of the kind of the stats right off the bat. That's really impressive. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I'm not sure what that translates to in terms of like miles per per kilowatt hour because I know some cars show that. Yeah, I was trying to do that in my head. I'm like 3.5 miles per kilowatt. Hour. It's Definitely around right <laughs> it's around 2.9 miles oh. per kilowatt hour. I was off just by a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, like I was a little bit surprised with how efficient the trip was, honestly. Um I don't think I talked about the weather either. It was when I left, it was around 30 degrees in Columbus and then it slowly got colder as the day went on that first day because it was like a 10-hour trip the first day. Um, extremely cold. By the time I arrived in Salt St. Marie, it was down to like 10 degrees, if not colder. So (laughs) it was, uh, it was freezing by the time I got there. I was glad to, uh, to arrive finally. And Salt St. Marie has a supercharger as well. So that was, that was a welcome, uh, thing to see (laughs) when I finally got there. (laughs) Yeah. I think that supercharger is brand new. It's only a few months old. It is, yeah, and that's kind of what made this trip possible too, because a lot of the chargers I stopped at were new. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of them were V3 superchargers as well, so they were super fast. That certainly helped. Um, but yeah, I, in terms of like charging and planning the trip, I did use Chargeway to plan the trip, and I was crazy impressed with how accurate it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you haven't used the the Chargeway app before, in there you there's a trip planning feature mm-hmm. where you can not only set like what car you have, and uh, it pulls all the charging information for you. That's like kind of the point of the app is that you don't have to think about that stuff. Uh, but you can also set temperature and what speed you think you're going to be going. So it takes all that into account and it's super helpful because uh, I could drop the temperature all the way down to 15 degrees and like be conservative with the trip and set my speed up really high because those two things really contribute to like poor efficiency in EVs is high speeds and, and low temperatures. So mm-hmm. 
um, using that to plan the trip. It was like incredibly accurate, like within 20 minutes of like my trip over those, those long, long periods. So super impressed with that. Um, and that certainly gave me a lot of peace of mind as well, knowing that that I'm able to then use that on future trips and know it's going to be accurate. So, Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. when, when you use the, the trip planner, did you, as you went, did you change the state of charge as well? Because I'm assuming at the superchargers, you went to 80% or did you go above that? So I, I really only used the app to plan while I was like stopped overnight or like the night mm. before. And then that was just to kind of plan out, like kind of budget my time essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, at least that's how I like to plan trips. It's more of like a time budgeting versus like planning specifically where I'm going to stop because like Tesla's really good at telling you, like, if you're not going to make it, you need to stop at a supercharger <laughs> soon, uh, so you can charge up. So I still use the like in, in car navigation, mm -hmm. like date, like while I was driving, just cause mm -hmm. I had trusted that a little bit more than having an app that wasn't connected to the car. So, <laughs> but for like time budgeting and knowing like how much I'll need to charge up the, like those charging stop times, like those were all very accurate. And like, so I knew exactly how long it would take, whether or not I actually stopped at the same superchargers or not. The time was like almost identical to what I experienced. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So out of all the charging stops, or like, I guess, can you tell us like how many stops you had to make to charge? Like at yeah. least on your first route up and then maybe on the way back? Definitely. Yeah, I can, I can talk through that. I'm working through like script kind of, kind of half scripting the video, I guess, cause I'm trying to like <laughs> make sure I've got the, uh, got my thoughts together before I actually record kind of the summary of everything. Um, you can multitask right now. Just type out the script. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where is this? There we go. My organization is like helpful sometimes, but sometimes files will be buried in like five <laughs> folder trees and I can't even find it. And that's when it can get a uh, sometimes a little bit overkill. I'm, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I've got the, uh, the whole trip outline here. So day one was from, uh, from Columbus up to Salt St. Marie. That was like the first leg of the trip. That was my longest driving day. Uh, total, it took 10 hours, uh, around 10 hours, 15 minutes total, uh, 528 miles. And uh, I had five charging stops along the way. Kind of along the way, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll walk through this in the video, but I don't have fast home charging. I just use a regular wall outlet at home, which kind of mm -hmm. burns me sometimes when I've got to leave on a long trip the next day. And I've been driving a lot the day before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> ideally you've got a setup at home where you like, you've got a level two charger. You can charge your battery up to whatever you need in the morning. It's not a big deal over like an eight hour span when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um, for me though, those, that charge time is like 24 plus hours, depending on how low my battery is. So, <laughs> so I woke up the day of the trip and my battery was only at 60%. And I'm oh, like, no. that is not, that is definitely not going to make it to the first charging stop. Um, so I ended up going to the Polaris supercharger kind of on the North side of Columbus and stopping there for 30 minutes. Um, and like, that's kind of a negative thing of my specific situation and definitely like not the most ideal way to do this trip because ideally I wouldn't even need that charging stop. I would just be charged up enough and be able to make it all the way up to, to the first, uh, supercharging stop. So I charged up to like 90 plus percent at Polaris. Um, and then I stopped in mommy, uh, Ohio, just around kind of around Toledo area for 40 minutes. That was my longest charging stop of the day. Um, and luckily, I know I don't know what you do at at long charging stops like that, but like people always say, it's like such a time waste, and like um, I don't have time to sit in my car. And like the beauty of EVs, I think, is that you can like sit in your car. You're not burning any gas, keeping the heat running. Yep. And like yeah. I can work on my laptop while I'm sitting there. Like it's yeah. not uncomfortable, really, just sitting in my car working on stuff. Yeah, I've, I've, it's actually kind of funny that you did this trip in February because I didn't go as far north as you did. But when I worked for Tesla, um, I think I mentioned it on my my villain origin story uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, about like a, a time when I went up to um, 
it was uh, Saginaw, Michigan, uh, back in 2016 okay. to do a customer wow. test drive yeah. um, in summer, uh, similar temperatures, too. So, um, yeah, that was the nice thing about the Mami Supercharger is just the fact that you can sit in your car and let it warm up. Yeah. But downside is, is that there's no coffee near that Supercharger, and the closest bathroom, at least the Myers, or I think it's a Kroger's, I can't remember. It's a Meyer. It. Yeah, you're right. A Meyer. You have to walk the entire parking lot. To, yeah. to get there. <laughs> but that was one of the original superchargers, so I don't think it was as planned as some of That's the other true. <laughs> Yeah, the uh that was one thing I noticed consistently across the whole trip is like to stuff is close, but it's not as close as like a gas station where it's like a, a like twenty foot walk to the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's certainly like probably my biggest feedback to people planning out charging, especially like stop and go charging like that, where you're just like kind of doing these, those quick fill ups is you really need good infrastructure around it for people to use a bathroom, get a bite to eat, like do all that stuff. So it's, uh, I've noticed the same thing because most, uh, I'm going to shout out Meyer here, but they like basically everywhere I stopped all the way up through Michigan, almost every supercharger was at a Meyer. So yep. like yeah. shout out to them for kind of taking that initiative yeah. and working with <laughs> Tesla to get those sites online. Cause it was a, uh, huge help there. Mm-hmm. And I think I spent all my money at Meyer on the way up there oh. too. Cause I'd run <laughs> in and grab a, grab like a Starbucks drink out of the, out of the cooler, grab a water, uh, use a bathroom and I'd be on my way. So, um, I like stopping at grocery stores anyway, better on road trips rather than fast food anyway. I think it's a little bit healthier. So yes, that's, uh, yes. that's nice for me. <laughs> yeah. Plan to eat healthy and then plan where to charge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Mommy was the first first charging stop of the day, then went on to Bay City, Michigan, uh, stopped there for 25 minutes, uh, then stopped in Gaylord, Michigan for 25 minutes, and then finished in Salt St. Marie where I arrived um, for the night. It was, it was about like uh, five, close to six o'clock by the time I got there, and uh, it was a total of like 10 hours from the time I left my door to arriving in Salt St. Marie. And then I plugged in there. So, um, some of the work I had to do was around that area. So I was able to keep my car plugged in while I was doing the work I needed to do. (laughs) So I just let my car charge there while I was, I was working on stuff. And, uh, that was nice because it didn't really like, again, didn't take time away from my trip. It was a place I was already going. So I didn't (laughs) need to, uh, need to really worry about eating up any more time um the weird part about this trip is no place i stopped for the night uh no hotel had overnight charging really i didn't use any level two charging this entire trip (laughs) wow (laughs) yeah (laughs) wow so so essentially you use the chargers just kind of like how uh gas drivers would utilize a gas station in a way right exactly Yeah, because you don't really have gas pumps at hotels. No. So. <laughs> yeah. And if you did, I would be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. So so that was day one of the trip. Um, again, it was 528 miles up there. Um, efficiency for the first day was around 350 watt hours per mile. Um, if that means anything to you or not, if you drive a Tesla, you'll know what that means, but I, I don't know about others. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that but goes ter- over my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in terms of like range numbers, I did the math con- to convert things and that's about a 30% drop in range, um, over that long trip. And wow. I, I am now going to start telling people that like a 30% drop has got to be like worst case scenario because that was in like 15 degree weather and I was going 70 plus miles per hour the entire time. Mm-hmm. So those two things combined, if my efficiency is only drop is only 30%, I feel like that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. And I mean, plus like in the winter time, it, typically you don't see below 20. I yeah. mean, it depends on where you live. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for like, I'd, I try to cater to like Midwest people just cause that's my experience. And that's, that's what I think, uh, um, where there's a lot of hurdles for EV adoption is kind of the Midwest area because it's just, a, it's not a common thing here. Uh, it's mm-hmm. getting more common, but it's not as common as uh, it could be. And I think that's a, that's a big thing to kind of keep in mind is that like even 
in the worst worst scenarios and worst uh, worst environments, range drop isn't going to be like terrible. And obviously, like it wasn't so bad that I couldn't go do this trip, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so that was day one. Any other questions there before I move on to day two? Yeah. So, I mean, just out of curiosity, have you ever been up that way to like Mackinac City or? In that I area? haven't. No. I guess I didn't touch on that. The uh, that was my first time going across the Mackinac Bridge which yeah. was insane, yeah. especially in the winter <laughs> because the entire lake was frozen. So yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was like, <laughs> it was scary because like, I don't like going over bridges like that in the first place. Like I'm a little scared of it. And uh, you look out and it's just like icy. And then it's just like a void of white, like above, yep. <laughs> like where the, where the lake is super scary. Yeah. So yeah, that that play. I've only been up to Mackinac Island once in my life, yeah. and they said that in the winter time when it freezes, they actually use snow m- mobiles to go from the island to the mainland to like get food wow. and then go back. So they build like an ice bridge. Like I don't know how that's going to work with you know climate change, but like, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. The, I thought that was a pretty cool fact. That's wild. <laughs> I did see yeah. a. I probably saw an equal amount of snowmobiles and cars once I got kind of farther up into northern Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I can crazy imagine. Crazy how popular those are, which is awesome because they look like a lot of fun. So. Oh yeah. Well, it's a good thing you got a new set of winter tires before. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, that's another thing I didn't mention. I did get a I did get a fresh set of winter tires. That was <laughs> definitely needed because my tires were already slipping on like my stock tires I had with my car. Um, very glad I did get them because it was like very slick in some areas and had <laughs> snow dustings and it was definitely worth it. So if you're gonna do a trip like this, definitely get snow tires. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so day two, uh, spend the night in Salt Saint Marie. Uh, this day I had to head over to Escanaba to, uh, to do some other work stuff. And it was basically just going there and then driving to Mackinac city during that day. So, um, woke up in the morning. I, uh, had planned it on chargeway, like had plugged it all in and it said I was good. But then when I got to my car, I put in the destination on there to Escanaba, um, and it was saying I wasn't going to make it to the Escanaba supercharger where I needed to stop. So I luckily was still in Salt St. Marie, had to drive back to the Salt St. Marie supercharger. Um, and obviously I was like five minutes away from it. So my car didn't have time to preheat or anything. Plugged in and it said 30 minutes remaining to charge up the little tiny bit. It was like I needed like 10% maybe to bump up it up um and i wasn't ever pulling more than i think 15 or 20 kw (laughs) and (laughs) even when my car gets up like higher to um up into like the 80s and 90s i'm usually still pulling like close to 50 kw uh Mm -hmm. until it gets to like 95 close to 100 percent, where it really drops down and gets really low but it was that cold out out that uh, essentially all the supercharger was doing was just putting like essentially the minimal amount into my car. It was the weirdest wow. thing I've ever seen. Um, so two things I learned from that. First off, uh, if you're able to get a hotel that has overnight charging, do it. <laughs> Cause I, <laughs> I essentially got back to the hotel with around like 90% and just by sitting there overnight, it had dropped to like 85, 84% just from the cold. And I also keep sentry mode on all the time. So that that's a big battery drain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just about to ask what, what, what did you say the temperature was overnight? Oh, it got it got down below ten degrees overnight, so it was like really cold. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So the battery pack definitely froze. Yeah, um, yeah. And and I just want to clarify when I say froze, I just mean it got <laughs> really cold. It's not like it was like a solid thing of ice. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to clarify. That. <laughs> oh, also at my hotel in uh, Salt Saint Marie, there were two Machis that were parked there when I oh cool uh, when I pulled up. <laughs> Um, it was dark, so I didn't like investigate too closely, but, um, I think it might've been those same two that I saw later on the trip that I'll get to. So, (laughs) okay. (laughs) So stay tuned if you haven't tuned out yet. (laughs) Um, 
Yeah, so uh, definitely get overnight charging if you can, especially in these kind of conditions, just because it's going to like it gives you that extra buffer, kind of that extra peace of mind that, hey, my car is plugged in. I know it'll have this percent in the morning. I don't have to worry about it. Um, unfortunately, didn't have that super cold battery. Had to sit at the Salt St. Marie supercharger for 30 minutes. Luckily, I left a little bit earlier, so it didn't affect my schedule at all. But I can tell you if I like left late or left uh, like right on time, this would have made me late for my appointment. So that wouldn't have been good. Um, so after I was charged up enough at Salt St. Marie, it was a straight shot over to Escanaba. I didn't have to stop at all along the way there. And Escanaba is where my, where my meeting was, so I didn't have to... Uh, that time added at that supercharger was kind of a wash because it was like I was I was over there anyway. I yeah. I had my meeting. I I plugged in, got some lunch. Like it wasn't. It didn't really add time. In total, I was probably plugged in for like forty five minutes. But again, I was there already. It was like yeah. it didn't really like take away from my trip at all. It wasn't like I was waiting on my car to charge. Um, and this was also mostly a travel day too. So it wasn't like I was. This was taking me away from other stuff I needed to go do. Um, so, so just curious from like where you were saying in, uh, I salt St. Marie, is that, I think I'm the... pretty sure that's how you say it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm like pointing because I picture you know, the, <laughs> the UP in my head. I know yeah. where it's at. It's in the top corner. Yep. Um, how far was it between there and your, your first destination, the Escanaba? Uh, let's see. I can't remember off the top of my head. So I'll have to plug it into maps real quick. That, that's one thing that if um, everybody who's listening, the Upper Peninsula in Michigan has kind of lacked when it comes to like EV infrastructure, that's not Tesla, um, but it's getting better. I mean, like we're definitely seeing more of a, a network expanding up there, which is great because with me being from Cleveland, I want to get up there <laughs> like really bad because right. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's it's absolutely stunning up there. <laughs> yeah. And even in the even in the winter, it was gorgeous because you have so many of those like uh, um those evergreen trees and you've got Mm -hmm. like the snow was everywhere. Like it literally only the road was the only part that was like plowed. Like everything else was just blanketed in snow. It was really pretty. Like, did did you see the Northern lights? Because I know it's kind of common up there. I didn't know it. It honestly was so cold out at night. Like by the time the sun was going down, I was like headed back to the hotel. Cause I'm like, (laughs) I don't want to be out at night and freezing. So yeah, (laughs) I'd be the opposite. (laughs) Um, so I just plugged it into Google maps here. It's, it's a three hour drive, but it was, it's only 173 miles. Oh, so it's not too bad. No, not at all. Um, and through the, through the, is it Hiawatha, Hiawatha national forest? Um, yes. (laughs) 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 Sounds good. Um, (laughs) so drove through that on the way and that was really, that was really cool. So, um, yeah, but basically made it there, charged in Escanaba, and then started driving back to uh, Mackinac City where I was going to spend the night. So this day was kind of a weird one because it wasn't like I was like in a rush to get somewhere. It was more just kind of an extra buffer day, so I didn't have to drive like 14 hours in a single day. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> which makes for a long day. <laughs> right, right, and yeah. it, especially because like on – Tuesday I had driven 10 hours so I was like all right Wednesday is going to be more of a chill day of of just kind of like more easy driving so uh yeah so stopped in Escanaba I ended up just charging all the way to 100% because I'm like I'm sitting here I might as well charge it up just so I have an extra buffer when I get to get to Mackinac City and um so then left Escanaba with 100% and then drove to Mackinac City and they have a supercharger there as well. So I plugged in there and just charged up to um, 90% or a little bit over 90 because I figured I would lose some overnight again because that happened the night before. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but plugged in there and uh, got a bite to eat, came back to my car, and it was, it was over 90. So drove to my hotel, parked overnight, was all good so that was probably my like easiest day of traveling i think um Mm -hmm. because i really only had i could have only had two charging stops if i would have had uh didn't need to charge at salt st marie in the morning but that was yeah (laughs) that was a much easier day yeah it would be nice if more hotels started installing level twos right i actually think that should be like a standard at all hotels they should offer like two at least two chargers right 
of something. Yeah. Yeah. And and it doesn't need to be anything fancy either. I like I I honestly think it should just be a guest perk like like free, yeah. like free breakfast or um I don't know, like fitness room. Like you have all these other amenities like adding EV charging I think should definitely be one. Oh yeah. And the yeah. uh and the thing is it's a huge like customer acquisition method like for the, like basically the cost of the electricity to charge the car and that upfront install, you could essentially book any EV driver that's going to be coming through your town. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's such it's such a factor when people are planning out trips. Right. To have like overnight charging. Mm-hmm. I know for us as we're you know preparing, even though we're a year out to to move out west. Tyler has like a whole spreadsheet of hotels that are dog friendly and offer EV charging because <laughs> we're going right. to need it, you know, like, right. yeah, we're, we're going to find a campsite, which isn't ideal for everybody. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah. So hopefully more hotels get on board. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I certainly agree. And, uh, and I think it's definitely like, especially a new build hotel, like that should be a no brainer to put an EV charging. Like some of the older yeah. ones it might be like, obviously it's going to add some costs and stuff, but if like you're constructing a new hotel right now, um, or even an Airbnb, like if you have got an Airbnb, like that's a big thing as well <laughs> is, is having that yeah. charging. So <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of Airbnb, um, I was on LinkedIn the other day and um, somebody, I I can't remember exactly who shared it, but there was a stat that Airbnbs with EV charging have tripled since last year. That's awesome. Like, I think they said there's like over 500,000 locations with EV charging in the U.S. now. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 So maybe maybe that's what you'll need to look at. (laughs) (laughs) Find an Airbnb. Yeah. yeah, so spent the night in Mackinac City. I was luckily charged up enough um, that I didn't have to worry about charging in the morning again. I could just hop in the car and go. And I also made sure that I preheated my car before I hopped in because um, I know that can affect efficiency a lot when you're trying to like heat up that battery. And this day was my trip home. So I left around 8.30 a.m. with 91% and drove straight to Gaylord, Michigan again, uh, where mm-hmm. I had, I kind of essentially did the reverse uh, of the first day. So stopped in Gaylord, Michigan, charged there for 30 minutes, then stopped at uh, Bay City, Michigan. And this was my longest charging stop of the trip at 50 minutes. And I'm not sh- 100% sure why it took me this route. I don't know if it was trying to eliminate charging stops or what the car was trying to do. I just kind of let it do its thing. Um, but I stopped in Bay City for 50 minutes and it charged me up to like close to 100%. It was really weird. Um, wow. But in Bay City, I got to see some really cool stuff. And if you follow yeah. me on Twitter, <laughs> um, you probably have seen these already. But. I, when I first pulled up and plugged in, I was, uh, just kind of sitting in my car. I go to grab my phone and I look up and there's a blue truck sitting like kind of, uh, again, it's at a mire. So it was sitting in the mire parking lot, like a blue truck sitting there. And I'm like, that truck looks interesting. Like I haven't seen, like, it looks like an F-150, but I haven't seen an F-150 that looks like that. So I get out and I go walk up closer to it. And, um, there are two other guys in a Tesla charging there that had also got out to go look at this truck. And we start taking a closer look, and turns out it's a Ford F-150 Lightning uh, Lariat <laughs> trim that I guess Ford had been testing or something. So that was, awesome. yeah, <laughs> super cool. My first time seeing it up close, too. Um, I walked up to the truck, and those two guys were, were standing there just kind of uh, looking at the truck. And I said, is this yours? And they're like, no, no, it's not ours. Like, the Ford employee just had, like, gone in the gone in the store. So we, like, took our chance to go check it out. <laughs> so <laughs> There's no dash cam, right? <laughs> I, I hope not. It's, they're going to get some uh, some no. photos of me looking like a creep if they do. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're used to it with the, yeah. with the lightning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say, uh, Alex, sorry, uh, I will say when you go to Michigan, the best part is you never know which cars you're going to run into testing. Right. Like, it's so weird. You cross the Ohio border, you hit Michigan, and it's almost like you, you. it's like uh, Pokemon in a way. Like, you never know which one's <laughs> going to show up. So it's right. it's it's exciting. <laughs> we should create a, uh, like, a Pokedex, but for, uh, for like, finding <laughs> EVs. Like, we got to... <laughs> you should. <laughs> gamify the whole thing that's right that's right (laughs) yep um 
Yeah, so so that Ford was sitting there, and there were also two Maquis there, which I'm thinking now that I'm just realizing this too. This I did not think about this till I just started talking about it um, ten minutes ago. But I believe those two Maquis were the same ones I saw parked at the hotel because they were the same color. It was like a gray one and a black one, I think. Um, were parked at the Electrify America station in Bay City <laughs> charging. So. I think they might have been like benchmarking it against the the F one fifty or something like that because oh, those are possibly. those are the only other EVs that Ford has. So I'm guessing maybe they were just like along for the trip with the F one fifty to benchmark it and get tests done on it. So yeah, yeah. Especially, I mean, if they're up in the Upper Peninsula, they could be doing more winter testing that's, and maybe future battery technology. That's and, what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So so that was really cool. Um, so the two Machis, the Ford F-150, and then about 15 minutes before I've got to leave, a um, a Cadillac Lyric pulls up. And I didn't recognize it at first, and probably because it was very uh, unrefined <laughs> on the <Yeah>. exterior. <laughs> and I, I tweeted those photos as well, and I'll, I'll splice them into the podcast here, but the exterior looked rough like it was missing body panels the like front lights didn't look right some of the badges were missing like it was wow. clearly a test mule like they had just kind of thrown yeah. it together and are just <laughs> testing like the battery and motor um but they again just plugged in at the electrify america station there so they might have been testing like charging stuff too but um wow that was cool to see just because like it it literally looks like a prototype so <laughs> did, did you get a chance to see what it was charging at no i didn't um i wasn't sure how to like navigate it either because there were like some cadillac employees there and i didn't want to be like hey oh. what are you doing like and, yeah. and be like we literally can't say anything to you so i just kind of yeah. like laid yeah. back and just like cut like casually snapped some photos when they were away <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then was on my way so um <laughs> That's pretty cool to see. Yeah. Lyric. Yeah. Yeah. I know deliveries are supposed to start in the next 30 days. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. I hope they figure out the the exterior then because I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> um, and that definitely, I, we'll I mean, see. it definitely was a prototype. Like there's no way the finished vehicle looks anything like that. Cause it was literally mm -hmm. like missing body panels. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I was going to say, if people poke fun at Tesla for some of their delivery right. stories, then right. <laughs> I can only imagine if GM delivered a car like that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that was Bay City. That was probably the most exciting like stop because I got to see all those cool cars and like I was it was sad because I was like sitting on my laptop trying to get work done and then like all these cars pull up and I'm like I can't like not go look at them. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is part of your job. That's true. So, I mean, that's true. Yeah, Market research. The EV industry. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So finished up charging there and then continued to Finley, Ohio which is a new V3 supercharger. Um, yeah. So arrived there with a pretty low state of charge, um, but that was definitely my quickest stop of the trip because I was only there for 15 minutes. Like that was easily my fastest wow. stop. Um, and again, I was only charging up there enough to get all the way home. Luckily, it had warmed up enough by that time that like, losing range from cold wasn't as much of an issue um and i mm -hmm. was able to like it was above freezing at that point um but stopped there for literally 15 minutes continued home arrived with 14 percent, and plugged in at home at like 5 30 p.m so that whole third day was like probably my quickest travel day um i think it was the like shortest distance but also like the charging stops were a lot more manageable because there was only three of them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And as you said, it, it warmed up too, which I'm assuming as your battery preconditioned it, that happened faster right. than if it was below 15 or so. Exactly. Yeah. Did um, when you went through Finley, did you stop at? I, I know the supercharger is right by it, uh, is right by a Denny's. Mm -hmm. Did you get at, like a Grand Slam or anything like that? No, I had, like. No. <laughs> I'm so bad about like I should probably like actually have meals on road trips, but like I'm 
I don't think I stopped on the road ever to actually like go eat a meal. It was always like grab a couple like protein bars at the Meyer and like a yeah. like a water or Starbucks and then like get going. <laughs> so yeah. um, hey, efficient. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But no, I should I should probably like actually stop for meals. I was telling Mallory that when I got home, I'm like, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it never makes you feel that good when you don't actually like eat food. You're just kind of eating like mm-hmm. snacks. So yeah, yeah, almost like filler, <laughs> right? Filler food, right? Yeah. Um, uh, only other thing I forgot to mention was uh, just autopilot through the whole trip. Um, that was like incredible and definitely like wouldn't want to do this trip without it. <laughs> um, luckily, like, like I said, the roads were plowed enough where like lane lines were really visible and there were just these long stretches where I was like one of the only cars on the road. So like the fact that I could just put autopilot on and not really worry about, not really worry about like, uh, all those micro adjustments and like keeping my foot on the gas or the, I guess, the accelerator, um <laughs> come on Alex. i know i should know this by now um but all of that was just super nice the only issue i had was when i was driving to finley um i lost autopilot for about an hour and it was weird because i thought tesla had transitioned to like their vision system right they weren't using the radar yeah. anymore And I had always had issues in the winter with my radar, like caking up with like sleet and snow and stuff where the radar like literally can't see through it. So I'm like, oh, I guess like, like I shouldn't have that problem anymore because it's using the using vision. And uh, it turns out it's not because that exact same thing happened on that trip uh, from Bay City to Finley lost autopilot for a whole hour because it was like freezing rain and sticking to my car and uh completely like froze the whole front of my car so the radar like went black essentially and it couldn't use autopilot (laughs) wow yeah do do you think you know you mentioned that like tesla going to like the the visual basis for um for uh, autopilot do you think that's only newer vehicles and not ones that already had radar existing and like already on the vehicle? Yeah, that's what all the discussion was around it. I, I was under the impression that they initially were only doing it on new vehicles, but mm-hmm. after they had like tested it for a few months, they were just like switching all vehicles over to vision. That's the un- the impression I got from the from what Tesla has told us, but I guess that's not the case. Like mine is definitely still yeah. using radar for for uh trips. So Wow. Yeah. Well, that might be a good question for the service center. See if they can answer that for you. Yeah. If they if they can get back to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like slammed oh, right now. Episode. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. That's that'd be really interesting to like know if um if the older Teslas are still using radar. Yeah. And like just the newer ones are not. I mean, mine definitely is. I know that for for sure because like I don't know why it would disable autopilot just for losing the radar if it's not using it but i don't know if there's some yeah. kind of code they've written in where like if you lose any sensor we're just gonna we're gonna quit so i don't know <laughs> temperamental yeah <laughs> yeah um the, well, it sounds like a great trip <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll list a couple other negatives um <laughs> to keep in yeah. balance because <laughs> overall it, i will say overall it was like super pleasant um if you don't want to deal with like trying to figure out what chargers you can stop at and all that stuff, like the Tesla charging and road trip experience is gotta be the best. Like, I don't think that's a question really. Like (laughs) they've really got it down with the supercharger network and integrating into the car and all that stuff. Um, granted you might see some higher charging speeds at like, like with other vehicles, but Mm -hmm. the like, full integration kind of the the tesla ecosystem like kills it on the on the road trip and charging side so um but there are some negatives to that uh because tesla is so software based three times throughout this trip my touchscreen went completely uh frozen like like the screen screen froze i couldn't touch anything i couldn't do anything on the touchscreen three different times throughout the trip <laughs> oh my god yeah was it was that just on your first day or like was that over the period that was the over trip? the that was over the whole trip um so it didn't happen at all the first day i think it happened once the second day and then it happened twice uh on the third day because i got like some freezing rain and like um it was right after my um 
it was right after my uh, radar had had frozen over. Once it went away, and then like I stopped in Finlay. Once I left Finlay, then my screen went black. Like like 20 minutes later. So <laughs> oh my God. it was really weird. So wow, the screen didn't actually go black. That was the weird part. The screen was still on. It was just like frozen. I couldn't interact with it or do anything. It was just like stuck on whatever it got frozen. So I had to manually reset the touchscreen while I was driving, which is like super scary because you've got, you don't know what speed you're going. Um, yeah. Autopilot says enabled sometimes while a screen is off. Um, cause the autopilot like, uh, system is separate from like the touchscreen system. So it can stay on sometimes. So I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm on autopilot. So I just try to disable it like as soon as that happens. <laughs> and it was like super scary. Um, the worst part was I got stuck in like a pretty bad rainstorm on kind of my final leg of the trip and the screen froze it was pouring rain and the automatic wipers just like wouldn't work like the wipers would oh, couldn't man. turn on <laughs> so i had to oh no luckily i could still like press the button on the left stock to like activate the wipers but i had to do it like every second so that the wipers kept moving because the automatic like wouldn't wasn't working for some reason really yeah so like so like i i know from like this past weekend when we did our test drive in a model y you press it once and it does like a quick can you press it in and just hold it i know like the the windshield wiper fluid will eventually spray but like if yeah. you did it lightly does that keep the blades going i don't think so no interesting wow yeah it was that was probably like the worst experience of the whole trip because i like essentially lost visibility and had to keep pressing that so i could see these like little glimpses and i was like in the left lane too so i wasn't it's not like i could like swerve over and pull over and it's poor yeah. lane too so like i'm gonna get hit if i pull over or swerve in front of somebody so i'm like i'm just gonna keep going the same speed and yeah that was that was definitely the scariest part of the trip and like I don't know what causes that if the computer's just getting old because I've had that happen before, but never like that frequency, um, mm -hmm. like on this on the same like three day stretch. So, wow. Well, I know that the old Model S's and X's had like uh, I think it was the uh, MCU issues mm -hmm. they were having like from like 2014 to 2015. Yeah. Model years, so I'm wondering if maybe they're going to start experiencing that with Model Threes. Like, I sure hope not, but. Um... I mean, it is a computer. It's still a touchscreen. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I've already noticed some, like, burn-in on my touchscreen um, where, like, there's common messages or, like, certain UI things are always there. If they're, like, white for some reason, I can see, like, the, the outline of symbols that are there. So it's definitely, like, already wow. sh starting to show some wear just, like, two and a half years in. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was curious to know how those would hold up because the the Model Y that we drove, um, I noticed the back of the touchscreen was super hot to the touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, and if you press and like hold your fingers on the screen, it's also hot. Yeah. So like, I'm curious to know like why that's creating so much heat. Yeah. I'm hoping. I know they just switched over to the the Ryzen processors, um, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping those are a little bit more efficient because that's usually what creates heat in the computer is just like all the processing power so yeah yeah <laughs> um and if it's not a good chip it can overheat real easily so i'm hoping if they're able to like kind of switch that over it's it's able to alleviate some of those issues but mm -hmm. yeah that was that was like definitely the dat like i really saw the downfall of having a like heavily software-based system uh <laughs> firsthand yeah. so yeah yeah and especially not having a fallback too of having another screen right you know just having that be the heart of the car yeah because if that went black yeah. for like an extended period like if it never turned back on like i'd be kind of screwed like i'd have to use the app or like figure something else out it's not like i can like not drive home so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> jeez wow well at least at least it's working now and hopefully it doesn't happen again but yeah and I've heard the cold weather might contribute to that because I've mm. never had that happen in the summer, like where the screen's gone black. So I'm wondering yeah. if just the like ambient temperature caused that to happen um, because I don't think, I don't know if the like heating system keeps the computer warm as well. Like obviously it heats the cabin, but I don't know since that's so close to like the outside of the car, it might, might've uh, caused that issue, but I don't know. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, when you find out, let us know. 
I'm trying to think if I have any other questions. Um, <laughs> I, you know, like I, I, I don't because like, you know, like I'm curious to watch your video, obviously to yeah. like see it visually, but like, you know, from my experience with like the old supercharger, like network, I obviously don't have the driving experience with like the new and improved. I'm just going to say it it's improved. <laughs> Um, it, it does make road trips easier mm -hmm. to have a widespread network across the country. Yep. And thankfully, a bunch of the other, you know, like EV um, manufacturers or like networks are putting out, you know, more connectors right. for more drivers. But it's just the rate that Tesla is installing superchargers, it's nuts. It's insane. Like, yeah. This past, this past weekend, they just had uh, six go in construction just oh literally gosh. in a day it just popped up and it's like what it's, it's insane it's nuts yeah. yeah that's easily tesla's biggest advantage right now i think they're i think people are going to start to catch them on their cars we've already kind of seen it with with price with range mm -hmm. with charging speed like cars are catching up like whether whether or not you uh want to believe it or not like they are like <laughs> like they yep. just are um <laughs> And that's going to be Tesla's main advantage is is the ecosystem. It's the charging. It's the all the fun little features they add, like all the all the like the app integration, like just kind of the full system is really what's going to start selling that car more than mm -hmm. the car itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to see your video, and we'll have to post the link whenever it does go live. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's linked below this episode in the show notes, and uh, yes, it's not yeah. a week after. <laughs> yes, I forgot we're recording ahead here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm struggling right now to kind of like create the narrative of the video because it's uh, – it's a lot of me just talking to the camera and usually I like to kind of splice in some more like driving or like artistic shots and stuff. But I was like driving the entire time. So I had to like yeah. <laughs> either mount my camera or not record anything. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need to get some cool like time-lapse shots of me driving and like going across the bridge and like some of that stuff I made sure to get video of. So nice. Um, hopefully you see some of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look forward to it. <laughs> Cool. So that, uh, I guess, uh, that kind of wraps up this episode. Uh, the short and sweet, the TLDR is yes, it's possible to take a road trip in an EV and you can do it in the cold. You can do it in the rain. You can do it in all these conditions. It's still possible. Um, I think it's just, uh, the biggest thing I've noticed is like, even though the network is great right now, it could be even better. Like ideally yeah. I would have charging overnight at every hotel. I wouldn't have to take, take extra stops and spend time either in the evening or in the morning to charge. Like uh, a lot of that stuff can still be improved. So. Yeah. And, and I will say, you know, if, if anybody's listening, going to do like an EV road trip, the, the thing right now is that you do have to plan. Yeah. Like, yeah, the infrastructure is getting better every single day. Right. But at the moment, you really need to have a plan in place. And and I guess like any road trip, you really need to have a plan in place, <laughs> yeah. too, because it's not like it's not realistic to say you're going to drive from New York to L.A. in a day. Right. Like, right. You know, mo most people, regardless of what you drive, you're going to end up stopping. <laughs> right. <laughs> so unless you have the bladder of steel, which nobody has. <laughs> it's a good band and name. And we'll end this episode on that. <laughs> <laughs> good band name right there. Well, was, yeah, bl bladder steel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great band name. <laughs> well, th thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. We'll have to do one for for you. Maybe we can do one on your uh, your car shopping experience. I don't think we've done yes. a whole dedicated episode on that yet, but that would be yes. interesting to hear. Yeah, I think I think we definitely should talk about that. And you know, I, I want to invite um, anybody who's listening if you are doing an EV road trip or if you're planning on one. Uh, or planning on doing one, send us a message, you know, on Twitter or Facebook, um, even a voice message because we could share it on our podcast and it'd be great to know what you guys are doing to prepare for road trips, um, especially as the weather is getting warmer. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. Appreciate everybody listening and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode.